Thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity to talk about a project that's near and dear to my heart. And I'll start out with describing this big science done in developing countries. My name is Tabitha Dobbins. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Physics and Astronomy. And the uh, project that I'm working on is on the continent of Africa. So what do I mean by big science? Big science is a project that's approximately 40 to 80 million at construction, not operational costs. So it means that we're involved multiple institutions, multiple principal investigators, and giving students the opportunity to work in big team projects. The project that I'm working on is called the African Light Source Project. The cost of it is about 50 to 80 million dollars, and a light source is a centrally located instrument that gives us high intensity x-rays so we can get information about our samples that is unique compared to, um, compared to other techniques. And when we look at all of the light sources that are available in the world, what we can see is that Africa is the only habitable continent that does not have a light source. Hence, we're working very hard to bring visibility to this science and this technology for the continent of Africa. What the light source can do is um, very multidisciplinary research, so almost any area of science and engineering will find a home at the light source and be able to solve its problems from material science to chemistry to physics. We can see down to atomic and nanoscale resolution and give, a, give ourselves information about our samples using these facilities. But not only can a light source give us answers about our samples, we can use a light source as science for diplomacy, as is the case for Sesame Light Source, which is in Jordan. It had its first x-ray light in 2017, and it has brought together scientists from around the Middle East. The same thing can be happen in the continent of Africa. We can use this as a tool for science for diplomacy, but we can also answer regional problems such as uh, solving the crystal structure of malaria, Ebola, and other diseases without having to travel with the samples. There is another aspect that the light source can benefit, and what you see is a, a scale that um, correlates the advances in light source intensity with time and the scientific output. And these are coming from light sources worldwide. So we can see that this may be a, a correlated impact. Here I show a, um, the world globe, which is um, scaled with papers published in 2016. And so you can see that there is tremendous opportunity for, for scientific output, and the light source can be a vehicle for that in the continent of Africa. I first got involved with this project in 2015 when I was invited to join the African Light Source uh, Steering Committee. And now that committee is 16 persons and we have thrown three conferences uh, 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 about the African Light Source. Uh, two of those will, are on the continent of Africa, one was at a light source in Europe. The way I got Rowan involved is by um, this SPARC initiative. It means that we are characterizing samples that are mailed into us using US-based light sources. And two of my students were involved in he helping us to set up the SPARC initiative and to measure the samples. But I've been taking Rowan students to light sources for many years now. These are just some of the photos. And the students do their own research. We, we study our own samples that we prepare here at Rowan in addition to measuring for the, um, for the SPARC initiative. So they, they're having fun. <laughs> okay. And, and one of the other uh, areas where this, this topic can uh, touch Rowan is that I'm working with, uh, with faculty in the college in chess and also in the College of Education to develop a course. It'll be a global literacy course called Big STEM in Developing Countries. And I want to finish by saying what better place really to teach students about filling a void when they see one. And so this is, um, this is the case of Henry Rowan. He saw a void geographically in South Jersey with the lack of engineering school, and he filled that void. We can also teach students uh, to think in this way. So I want to say thank you, and I believe I'm out of time. <laughs> and I look forward to questions later.